So, we are sitting here with Belinda Balaski and hello first. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, you? I am so happy to be here in Germany, having such a good time. <laughs> oh, that's great to hear. You played so amaz amazing roles in the past and you worked with Joey Dante, uh, you've been in The Hauling, in Gremlins, so... Um, how uh, Piranha, of course. Uh, how was it for you, the experiences in such movies, which are now big hits, everybody knows them. They mean uh, they are pioneers of horror movies. Well, at the time we did not know this would happen. At the time, you know, we were putting together independent films, you know, and everybody loves to work so much that we put our heart and our soul into it, you know, and the combination, say, for The Howling and even Piranha, of John Sayles, who is such a brilliant writer, and Joe Dante, and Rob Bottin, who is such a brilliant uh, special effects man, you know, I think we were so fortunate to have so many geniuses to work together. Okay. It's the truth. And casting, of course, is nine-tenths of it, because it takes all of that energy to come together to create this whole. And, and I think the casting and all of those elements are what make them classics. And Joe, the difference between Joe's films and other horror films, I think, are his humor, which is what is lacking in a lot of other horror films, and his politics. He's so political. Really? <laughs> oh yes, he has a lot of political humor going on. And he's such a film buff that he's always throwing in these things that people like you can appreciate, you know, maybe even the general audience understands too. He names his characters after directors and, you know, he's always using little bits of this information that people go, catch on to, you know, and it's, just, it's so brilliant of him. Of course. Yes. And your role in Holling, I mean, when I remember the scenes when you're in this wooden house you get out of it with the wolf who's transforming himself. <laughs> Being on the stage and, and performing this, isn't there a bit of a fear doing that scene in real? Because, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it's not CGI, it's not computer, there were real prosthetics of these creatures. Do you want to know the truth? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, when we did that scene, there was no werewolf. <laughs> Rob Bottin, seriously, Rob Bottin had not finished the werewolf. Um, we did all our close-ups. All our, uh, all of our shots uh, during the shooting of it, there was no werewolf. We were reacting to not knowing how big it would be, what it could do, what it would look like, none of that. And uh, three months after we finished the film, we get the call, Joe calls, Rob finally finished the werewolf. Come back, we're going to do your two shots. So now we come back three months later, my hair is longer, and I say, my hair is longer. No, no, they said, it looks the same. But if you watch that scene, that very scene, you'll see my hair goes like this. You can only watch in slow motion, because Joe's such a brilliant editor, you can't catch it. Even when I tell you, you can't catch it. But Rob Bottin, he made, so brilliant, you know, he made such a brilliant werewolf. And uh, people say, well, wasn't it frightening to work once we finally got him in the room? Wasn't it frightening to work with him? But my, my vision of working with this werewolf is about 30 guys on their knees blowing through straws, <laughs> you know, to make the, the, the monster come, you know, and to make that transformation. So you try not to laugh, right? <laughs> When I think about Piranha, when I uh, saw it today, as a kid it was really shocking and frightening. Right, you no one ever wants to swim after that movie, yes, I know and it I affects a, people. Yeah. I, adult, I looked over it and find it kind of funny. Because it's it very part funny. Part two, it was funny because James Cameron did it. But, um, yes, that is what's funny. <laughs> <laughs> for you, when, when you read the script of it, did you uh, laugh or did you find, find uh, okay, this could be real horror? When I audition, I only get two pages. Okay. 
I do not know anything past that when you're cast, right? So then you arrive on the set and they're adding pages every day. So it's sort of a, an evolving thing, do you know? And working with Joe, he, well, I had done Cannonball with Paul Bartel, and Paul Bartel and I were both on the set here in Texas, you know, and we're, we're like, Joe, we don't have a scene together. Joe, we want to work together. We want to do a scene together. Finally, he said, okay, write one. So I went back that night to the hotel, and I wrote that, that midnight scene, the moonlight scene. And to me, I think the scene really is the moment where the whole film begins to change. And I think without that scene, it wouldn't be what it is. I think that is a really transformational scene. And I, but he allows us that creative freedom. And it's, it's just wonderful that we all have that ability to put our input in, do you know? And that's what's so fun about working with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I think about Piranha, I mean, it's one of those movies who is exactly famous for monsters in the water like Jaws. You know? Well, I mean, that is Rob Bottin again. And do you know, uh, I met Rob Bottin on that set. He was 16 years old. When he made those piranhas, he was 16 years old. Whoa, yeah. that's a young age. Yes. Yes, I always think of Rob Bottin sitting across from the pool. He always said like this thinking, thinking, you know, because he's constantly creating, but he was just a child. Yeah. A brilliant, brilliant child. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I love him, yes. Because he makes us look good, you know? Of course. Yes. That's, uh, If his job weren't as brilliant, we would not be as brilliant, you know? If I, if I watch the, uh, the 80s movies, like uh, The Howling, um, Piranha, Gremlins, it's a, it's a late 80s movie. Yes. Um, I ask myself it's, um, how, how it come that the movies are 30 or 35 years later, this kind of cult stuff, yeah? And, um, you know, you, you told about um, Rob Bottin, 16 years old, that a 16 years old guy uh, create this. Isn't it amazing? 35 years later, it's, it's... And who would ever know? I remember I was on a panel once with uh, Margot Kidder and Dee Wallace, and, and it was sort of a femme fatale panel. And, and I was asked, the question that came to me was, At what point did you realize that these films had become a classic, you know? And at what point did you realize you had this fan base? And I, I looked out into this room filled with people and I, I said, Facebook? <laughs> and that is because 10 seconds before Facebook, I don't think any of us knew. Facebook brought all of you to us and all of us had not a clue. I'm afraid that neither one of us will be paid for two weeks. Couldn't you get Mr. Corbin to, well, to just give us a little more time? Mrs. Harris, the bank and I have the same purpose in life, to make money, not to support a lot of deadbeats. And we are huge fans of B-movies. Do you mm -hmm. have a B-movie which you enjoy? Ah, well, you know, I still can't take a shower. I think that has to do with psycho. <laughs> I mean, there are things that, you know, as, as a child that affect us. I tend to be more uh, inclined towards psychological thriller, you know, uh, those kind of films. Uh, okay. Children of the Damned, Bunny Lake is Missing, <laughs> these kind of films. I love psychological thrillers, so oh, great. that's more my genre. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, you're welcome. It's, it's <laughs> great to have you here in Germany. Thank Hope to see you. you once it's again been sometime. such a joy. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> And I uh, hope to see you on here from you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.